Welcome to the Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church. If you're present or if you're viewing online, we are glad to have you assemble with us through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can be one mind and one spirit as we worship the true and the living God. It's a blessing for us to be here, to be alive, and to have food to eat and a place to live, clothes to put on our back. We're not in a war-torn country where there's uh, an army, but we do realize that we have those who are against the Christians and against the love of Christ by killing one another. So we have a need for much prayer and discipline in the home. So we're praying for every parent that got children that, that they can be saved and make sure that they teach the word to their children. As we present ourselves in a worship service, we're going to ask God to uh, just empower us with his Holy Spirit. We come, Father, thanking you for just allowing us to be alive. We realize, Father, that this day was predestined from the foundation of the earth. And, Lord, you have purpose in, for our lives. We ask, Lord, as we learn more of your word, that we will become a better witness for you to be, help build your kingdom here on earth. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son that you allowed him to die on the cross for our sins. And, Father, we prepare to have a great celebration, not just at Mount Olive, but at all the different churches that are established in your name. Father, we pray that, that it will be focused on you and not on us and not on what we are doing, but what you have done and what you are doing right now. And, Lord, as we present our bodies and our minds and our spirits to you, we'll just avail ourselves to be used by your word and by your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We will sing hymn number 120, Because He Lives.
Mount Olive. Hope everyone is having a great morning so far. I want to take this time just for a moment. I will be reading the scripture from Psalms 142. But I have some in my heart I would like to say it won't take but a moment if you all will grant me liberty. The deacon position is a position that is not called, that is appointed, and it's appointed by the church members. And I will stand here in front of you today because I would like to apologize for my tardiness. I feel like it's my duty to do so because I y'all appointed me to a duty and I need to be present. And if I'm not present, just like a job or a school, I would have to give an excuse. But uh, my job, uh, sometimes we've had a lot of escapes. Y'all probably heard in the news. So sometimes I have to go and stand guard at our Supermax prison. And the one I have to work at, I have to drive two hours there to guard the prison for 12 hours and drive two hours back. And sometimes I can't make it back for church. And it's normally on the weekends when they run a skeleton crew. So if I'm not here, that's what I'm doing. So I solicit y'all prayers. And again, I apologize for my tardiness, okay? Scripture we read from Psalms. 142, and it reads as follows, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, that thou knewest my path, and the way wherein I walk have they prevailed have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand, and behold, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me, no man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they have strong, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise the name. That righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. I read to you Psalms 142 in its entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of His holy word. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you today as long as we know how saying thank you. Father, thank you for allowing us to go to sleep last night and wake up this morning. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to have a portion of health and strength. Father, we thank you for giving us the will and mind to want to come out to your house of worship to give you all the praise and glory. Father, we thank you for our pastor today, Father. Father, we thank you for continuing to give him the ability to lead us, your people, we thank you for the the ministers in the pulpit that uh, aids him. Father, we thank you for his family that sticks by his side. Father, we ask that as we go throughout this service that you just have your way. Lord, we pray for our musicians that they play skillfully, Father. Father, and when we leave here and return back to our homes, we ask that we find them after we left them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I'm satisfied. Satisfied with Jesus, I'm satisfied with Jesus, I'm satisfied with Jesus in my heart, oh, I'm satisfied with Jesus, I'm satisfied.
<laughs> Good morning. Just have a couple announcements this morning. From the Sixth Avenue Missionary Baptist Church in Columbus, Mississippi, we cordially extend an invitation to you to share with us in the celebration of Pastor David Jefferson Johnson Jr. and family's second pastoral appreciation at the Sixth Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. He is also celebrating 38 years of service for the Lord Jesus. This celebration will be held on March 10th, 2024. Reverend Bobby L. Reeves, Associate Minister of the Sixth Avenue Missionary Baptist Church, Columbus, Mississippi, will be our guest preacher for the 10 o'clock a.m. morning worship service. Reverend Johnson F. Johnson, no, John F. Johnson, I'm sorry, Pastor of Living Faith Bible Church, Houston, Texas, will be our special guest for the 3 o'clock service. The theme for the occasion is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. A fellowship meal will be served from 12 o'clock noon to 2 o'clock p.m. at the Sandfield Community Center between services. Prayerfully and sincerely with faithful expectation of a blessed celebration in Christ Jesus, the Sixth Avenue Missionary Baptist Church family. The Mass Choir will practice this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. For our prayer sick and shut-in and bereavement, on the prayer list we have Pastor Benny Henry, Brother Frank Henry Sr., Brother George Hayden, Sister Josephine Wash, Sister Dorothy Williams, the Neshoba General Nursing Home, the Moses family, the Lemons family, the Bells family, the Dickerson's family, the Davis family, Brother Leroy Brunson, Brother Alan Martins and family, Brother Johnny Hunter, Brother Curly B. Swoop, the Staples, Hills, Birds, and Davis family, Walmart on 495, Brother Robert James, Sister Hannah Mills, Sister Linda G. Tellis, Sister Ann Hudson, Brother James Henry, Brother Billy Collins, Sister Linda Vassar, Sister Ann Glenn and her grandson in the hospital, Juanita McLennan, Bernice Hill, Sister Johnny Mae Matthew, Sister Maddie Moore, Reverend Johnny Will Lash, Sister Warnetta Love. For sick and shut in, we have Bordrick Bo Scott, who's in Baptist ICU, Sister Shirley Bradford, Sister Shirley Hodges, Sister Janet Robertson, Sister Alicia Gardner, Brother Joey and Bellard Barnes, Sister Annie Sparks, who's in the nursing home, Brother Tony Williams, Sister Betty Hudson, Sister Shayla Henry, and Sister Sandra Ruffin. For bereavement, we have the Tellis family, the Greg Lee family, the Michael Shepherd family, and the Geneva Bacon family. This includes our announcements, prayer list, sick, shut-in, and bereavement. Let me ask you all a serious question. Did y'all know there was 12 gates to that city? If you didn't know it, you know it now. Thank you, choir, for reminding us of the 12 gates of the city. Let me tell you what else they got up there. They got the streets are paved with gold. And they had one big pearl at the pearly gates, made out of one big pearl. And all those things are attractive. But that's not what want me want to go to that city. I want to go there because my Lord and Savior is there. Jesus is there. Yeah. <laughs> there was 12 gates. I hope that everybody find a gate to get in because the Lord is calling us. And one day, we will be there where he is. 
Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this choir this morning, our young people. Lord, we pray their strength in you that you will watch over them, touch them, and keep them safe out of an evil and sinful world. Lord, we lift up a special prayer for those on our sick and shut-in list. Lord, it's not a good thing to be incapacitated, not able to do the things that you put us on this earth to do. But we know that you are the answer to all our problems. Whatever we are going through, whatever we are dealing with, Lord, we know that we can call on that name, and there's no other name under heaven and earth that we can call except the name of Jesus that can do and all the things that we need to have done so we can live a productive life down here on planet Earth. Lord, strengthen us. Bless every church door that's open in your name. Bless everyone that attends service. Let us not come out to the house of God and go back home the same way. Lord, we ought to grow just a little bit, if not a lot, and we come to your house and hear your word and hear the man of God that's going to stand and bring the word of life to us this morning. Empower him, anoint him, strengthen him, undergird him with your spirit, that he may preach the word, Lord, but you not see him, but you see Jesus. And know that he, he died, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Be with us and guide us and strengthen us now, Lord. We ask you to bless the offering that we had been received. Bless us as we go about our daily chores today. Let us not... Just forget about what we heard, but let us go and do what your word told us to do. Amen. Study to show ourselves approved. A workman need not be ashamed, but rightly divide in the word of truth. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this day and for every day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Be strong, my sister, for your work is not done, no. Just keep on believing and hold on tight. He's able to give you joy in the morning light.
Amen. To God the Father, to his son Jesus, present his Holy Spirit, to his pastor, Brother King, preacher's wives, deacons, deacons' wives, all of my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to be here. Uh, we had a great service so far. Uh, um, the children told us about the 12 gates. So there's a city. And they sung it truthfully. Uh, and they sung it to the best of their ability. And I thank God for them. Um, I was thinking that COVID was kind of off to the side, but I know of someone who has COVID this morning. Uh, and it's still out and about. But we know God is able. Uh, it brought it to my remembrance. Uh, you know, we still have that going on. Because I was so surprised when they told me. Uh, and then, you know, of course, those around them are affected as well. Amen. But God has been good to us. Uh, some of us have had it multiple times. And we're still here. Now, I won't hold you. Sisters, uh, you know, I don't stand up too long, <laughs> but I have a word for you today. Amen. Uh, second Timothy, second chapter, and I'll just read verse 18 and 19. Uh, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Uh, second Timothy 2, 18 and 19. We find it, say amen. amen. Bill, I hear pages turning, say wait, preacher. <laughs> wait, preacher. 2, verse 18 and 19 is all I'm going to read. You find, you find these words, who concerning the truth hath erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Just for a moment, I want to talk about the foundation of salvation. The foundation of salvation. Our text is all about Jesus Christ, the great foundation of our salvation. Uh, there's no other foundation for our salvation. This is a statement of confidence and should be a statement of victory. It's important that every Christian understand the implications of this verse. No matter what circumstances we are facing, however stressful they may be, and I know we all face some things, or disturbing that they may see, disappointment must not allow us to be bitter. It shouldn't embitter us. Nor should we allow them to deter us from being fully committed to exalting Jesus Christ in our lives. Uh, we, we shouldn't let our circumstances get to that point to where it affects our relationship, uh, exalting Jesus Christ in our lives. Our hope has a solid foundation 
that never waver. It, it don't shift from one side to the other. Uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't crumble or crack. It's a sure, solid foundation. Every child of God must remember that the foundation of our hope is God and that the foundation will never be destroyed. See, Timothy is told to remind those he, he teaches that they should suffer and serve Jesus. They should not waste time on pointless arguments about irrelevant beliefs that only harm and mislead other believers. It, you wouldn't believe what some people believe. Uh, people believe all sorts of things. And so it, it's just pointless to argue with them about it. Uh, uh, it's irrelevant. And, and, and one translation call it babble. It's nothing but babble. Uh, it, it don't mean anything, and there's no need to argue with them. And we know that it can mislead us. You know, one of the people think of, you remember Jim Jones? I know the young people don't. They think of that, and but the largest ever suicide was on U.S. soil was from someone else. And he sprinkled a little truth in it. Then he added his own things to it. Uh, uh, uh. And that's what it's talking about, misleading believers. Now, some will be way off in left field. But some will throw a little bit that come kind of middle ways and throw some God in it and then throw some of themselves in it. And I don't know where the aliens come in at it. But they throw that in it, too. Uh, and here he names specific men who were spreading untrue messages among the believers. Paul says, avoid these men, but rest confidently, uh, being confident in Jesus Christ. For he knows who belongs to him. Uh, maybe Timothy was... Uh, perhaps discouraged. Uh, he had one time been in prison for his faith, uh, Hebrew 13 and 23. And now Paul was in prison and let Timothy know up front that he would remain so until his death. Timothy was being attacked by false teachers just as the church is attacked today. In other words, it's still going on now. Satan's still at his job. Uh, you know, he didn't stop yesterday and, and, and not, you know, take a day off. Uh, uh, he's still at it today. Uh, matter of fact, he may have been at some of you before you come in here today. Uh, 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 you, you know what I mean. Uh, uh, I know he, he, he'll get at me, you know. Uh, uh, you know, Reverend, you don't, you, you don't feel like it today, don't, you know. But we know God is able. And he's a healer. Uh, he also tells them to be sure to rightly divide the word. Rightly divide. Being diligent, in, meaning in study, to handle it carefully. Rightly divided means implying cutting through the word carefully. Well, a couple of things, brothers and sisters, I want you to note before I leave today is the foundation, you look at the design of the foundation. It said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Nevertheless is a word that bridge connecting two ideas. The first of which has no power, even if it's factual, to lessen the greater truth of the second. So, Nevertheless, it's the most efficient rebuttal to any argument that you can make. In other words, you can state whatever facts you want, but I cannot be shaken from the truth that I know. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of God stand it sure. It's a true fact, in other words. No matter what was said before that, in verse 18, he said, nevertheless, in other words, this
this truth I'm saying is not affected by what came prior. There are a few things about the foundation that I noticed there. It's an essential foundation. In other words, Jesus is essential to our salvation. You cannot be saved by no other means. Uh, I don't care what they tell you, you can, because it's essential to the foundation. You, you, you can't come to the Father, he said, but by me. You got to come through Jesus Christ. There's no other way, no other back door. I know, trust me, people probably have tried it some kind of way, but you can't come. You can't have salvation without Jesus Christ. Uh, now, some don't even recognize him as the son of God. We know that. Some say, well, you know, we're the only religion that recognize, you know. Yeah, you recognize him as a man, but he was the son of God. Uh, nevertheless, Christ is essential. Jesus said, I am the way. Because the way you're traveling is in error. And I know I am the truth. The foundation of God standeth sure. There's no chips, there's no cracks, and there's no fault. The foundation of God is secure. The events in life, in other words, won't even change that. I don't care what you go through, it will not change the foundation of God. The gospel plan of salvation is still valid today. It was valid then. And it's valid now. The gospel plan of salvation, that is, is still valid today. And it made me think about, I uh, thank the Holy Spirit for this. I, I was looking in the refrigerator and uh, looked for some eggs. And I thought for sure I was going to make some eggs. And I looked and they weren't valid anymore. They were out of date. Uh, so I had to get rid of them. But the gospel plan of salvation is still valid. The hope of eternal life is still sure and steadfast. God's plans for his people as individuals, as the local church, is still valid today. I, I remember when this church, and I guess it's where I'm getting older, I can remember when it was a different building. And, 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 and the, wooden, the white church with the wooden benches and everything. And, and, and things are different now. We can do our mic checks and we can do all kinds of things now, right? Amen. And, but God hadn't changed and his work hadn't changed. It's still the same as it was back then. Now, we may have changed or how we do things may have changed, but the message is still the same. It's still the same. None of this has changed at all. Christ will stand strong against every attack. It is an eternal foundation. It said standing. The word standing means that it already had been standing in the past. Uh, it means that it will stand in the present, and it means it will stand in the future. If, if you do some background on it, it means it already has from the beginning. And it is now, and it's in the future. But secondly, notice there's a seal that it talks about. The word seal in the New Testament comes from the Greek word that means to stamp with a private mark. In the interest of keeping something secret or protecting or preserving the seal object. See, seals were used in official business, uh, uh, the, the Roman centurion for instance, might have a seal or document that was meant only for the eyes of the superior. And see, we do the same thing now with uh, uh, college transcripts. You know, you got an unofficial, then you got official transcripts. See, if the seal was broken, the one receiving the document would know that the letter had been tampered with or read by someone other than who sealed it. Uh, uh, we, we still have that stuff today. Uh, Revelation 7, 3 and 4 and, and, and 9, chapter 9 and 4 said, refers to a group of people who have the seal of God and does his protection during the tribulation. The seal or guarantee of God is still valid today. 
it, it, it hadn't expired. It's still valid today. There are a couple of reasons given in this verse. Verse 19. The Lord knows those who are his. Sometimes in this big world, it, it seems like we're just lost and nobody knows who we are. But I want to let you know that God knows who you are. He, he knows. Uh, uh, you ever been somewhere, you know, it's the first time, nobody there knows you. Uh, uh, they don't know you at all. They might say, well, I think I've seen you before somewhere. But they don't really know. God knows who you are. You, you can't, that means you can't hide from him then. Am I right about it? You, you can hide from me or I can hide from you, but, but we can't hide from God because he knows who we are. Even if we try and pretend to be somebody else, he still knows who we are. You, you might try to fit into the crowd of the world, but God still knows who you are. He knows who you are. Uh, he knows not only who we are, but he knows where we are. Uh, uh, I, I, if you've ever been in another country, uh, uh, and had that feeling that everything was strange around you, uh, don't worry, God knows where you are. Uh, uh, you're not lost to God. Uh, and not only that, he knows what we need. Now, it'd be different if he just knew who we were and where we were, but didn't know what we need. But he even knows what we need. Now, who would want to serve a God like that who knows me, knows where I'm at, but he knows exactly what I need. I know you ever been working on something, I know myself, and you got somebody helping you, and you turn around and say, hey, give me a, a pair of pliers, and they give you something else. Uh, uh, they there with you, but they don't know what you need. God knows what we need. He understands what we face. Uh, what we going through, God knows all about it. Uh, he knows all about our whole situation. He is actually watching us. Uh, the Bible says in, in 2 Chronicles 16 and 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Says his eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. See, he will not lose us in the shuffle of life's trauma. He, in other words, God hadn't forgotten about you, even when you're feeling down and you think that, okay, nothing has ever happened, nothing happened, things hadn't changed. God has not forgotten about you. It, 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 things hadn't shuffled to where he don't know where you are. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity or sin. Depart from iniquity or sin. On most seals, in some writing, we know uh, the writing on the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Remember, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and my sheep. Know my voice, right? That's what, that's what he said. He, he said, they, they, they know it, me. Uh, Jesus uh, bore the seal of God on him. God the Father has placed the seal of, of approval. And you can find that in John uh, the 27th verse, 6, chapter 27 verse. Those who trust in Jesus also possesses the seal of God, which is the Holy Spirit. You also were included in Christ. When you heard the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked with him with the seal. The promise of the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit or guarantee our inheritance unto the redemption of those who are God possessed. It's good to know that God's children are sealed this morning and are secure and sustain amid the wicked wickedness of this old world. In closing, brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that God is building
something wonderful. It is called the church. He has laid the foundation. He has placed the cornerstone. He has assembled living stones of this structure. He is adding on to it more and more. God is the master builder who is building his church. But he is using us to do his work. Each of God's people has a responsibility to build up and disciples of others. While discipleship begins in the home, it doesn't end there. Each person in the church has an opportunity to help shape the future of the other members of the household of God. Each one of us ought to support and help each other by teaching and modeling Jesus Christ. God's work of building his temple, it also includes us. You know, they, they, they talk about, especially around election time, it, it, they always talk about uh, the border and, and, and what's going on at the border. And, 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 and those who want to come in and become United States citizens. And they want to have the rights and privileges that we have. Uh, they want to be able to vote and everything else. Well, it, there's a process that have to, they have to go through in order to become a U.S. citizen and have those privileges. But I want to tell you this morning that the process is not that hard when it comes it, uh, to being a member of Jesus Christ. Being a member of his family, oh, it don't take that long. Uh, uh, all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died out on the cross. Now, he rose again. You don't have to cut through any red tape this morning. You can go ahead and get your citizenship. And then once you're in the family of Christ, that there's no big, you no little eyes, that we all are the same, and that we all can do the same thing, that God give us the privilege to do it. Well, in order to do that, Jesus, at the age of 12, he said, now, I must be about my father's business. He healed the sick and he gave sight to the blind. They tried to make a shame out of him and they put him between two thieves. But he said, no man will take my life and I'll lay it down. But if I lay it down, I'll pick it up again. And he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and he gave up the ghost. They took him down and they put him in a bar of tomb. But on the third day of the morning, Jesus rolled up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He's a sure foundation this morning. He's a secure foundation this morning. Some of us might wave and whipper, but God is solid in what he does. We need to trust in him this morning. Trust in the Lord. We need to trust in him this morning. He's a sure foundation for us. And let me tell you, some will tell you that you get saved, uh, you, you, you can do something and lose your salvation. But, but it doesn't work that way. Don't save one minute and we lose our salvation the next minute. Uh, uh, he's, we're sealed to the day of redemption. Now, he may say, well, you know, Reverend, some of these people, they hard to get on. How in the world can they be saved? Well, there are some people who are saved and going to heaven, but they just got an attitude. They, they still saved. Amen. <laughs> but just got an attitude. That don't mean they have lost their salvation. But you can get saved today. The doors of the church are open. You come by letter, candidate baptism, Christian experience, or maybe you're out of fellowship this morning. You can come today. The doors of the church are open.
Thank God for being here. Uh, thank God for this day, uh, beautiful day. Uh, it, it's been raining, but we know God is in charge. And we'll complain about the rain, but find out we'll need it. It was needed somewhere. Uh, but again, thank God for being here. Thank you for each of you, for the pastor and these children uh, that were singing. Amen. Amen. Thank God for them. Uh, it's good to see, uh, see the children, because uh, some churches don't have little children, and we need somebody to keep it going. Amen. When we leave, uh, is there any announcements? Anything? You got anything, Pastor? Okay. No announcements. Okay, I put pray and give the benediction. Gracious Father, we thank you, uh, Master, for this day. We, we thank you for being able to be around other believers, Father. Uh, we thank you for everything that we've seen in this service, uh, that we've heard, Father. Uh, continue to lift those up who are sick, uh, those who weren't able to make it, Father. 
Give us strength as we leave here today, Father, that uh, we'll be able to tell a dying world about your son, Jesus Christ. And bless everyone as they travel back home, Father, that they arrive there safely. We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.